This is the water bath that you'll run like the experiment into. So basically you take the cell and you submerge it in here, either directly in antifreeze or like in a plastic bag. And this just basically cools down the uh, reaction cell to cause the, the crystals to start forming. So I'm gonna be going over like how to set it up and how to run it and how you can like cool it down. So kind of the first thing is you wanna check like all of like these uh, clamps holding the hoses, since this like cools down and heats up quite a bit, you wanna like tighten these to make sure they haven't like loosened. Cause uh, the looser these are, the more it'll tend to leak. But this has been like leaking quite a bit right through here recently. So it's not like a foolproof system, but it's generally pretty, pretty watertight. So I'm just gonna go through and check all these and make sure they're tight so it's not gonna leak. And then these kind of go through the table and then down to like this thing. So this thing is the, the cooling unit. So this actually like cools the antifreeze and cycles it through. So we'll just go over these last clamps, make sure these are tight. And then, so to turn it on, there's like a switch on the back, on the back of here. It's just like a normal flip. But before we turn that on, we'll get our antifreeze ready. So we're gonna use antifreeze because we're going down to negative two degrees Celsius. So you can't use water because it'll freeze up. So to start, we'll kind of pull this out. And so this is where you'll be like filling the antifreeze as you turn it on, this will start draining. So it'll start like cycling up through the, the bucket up here. So to turn it on, you wanna make sure this is open. So this is where it'll be like spraying out the cold water. So this has to be open so it can have somewhere to like go. So you open up this valve and then up here at the top, you're gonna open up this big return valve. Other way. And then you flip this on. So just like a little kind of power switch in the back and you'll feel it. And then right as you turn this on, you'll start seeing this water down in here start to lower. So this is the, the big um, return pipe. So you gotta keep this in here so it just returns all the fluid that we're cooling and so as this starts to like lower down and um, antifreeze level you just slowly add some more so this is kind of a, a pretty rough process because sometimes it seems to take like a lot more antifreeze than other times but definitely at least this full bottle to fill up the entire reaction chamber So you pretty much just fill this up as it continues to like draw more antifreeze out to fill the bucket to cool it. So it usually takes all of this like O'Reilly's bottle and then a little bit of this one. And so I don't know how easy this is to see, but um, there's like this little line right here. You can see that, it's like this top little gap. That's kind of like the top fill line. So you want to kind of keep it close to that, but not over that. And this is all stuff that I've just figured out from like trial and error. So if you find something different, then definitely go off your intuition. But yeah, the more this kind of fills up, the slower this will start to like decrease in volume. So you kind of just let it sit for a second. Cause uh, usually as it like kind of warms up, the levels will kind of change. And if you accidentally overfill it, which is pretty easy to do, I usually just take this bucket here and you can just open it up and then like dunk it in here to remove some of the volume so it's not like overflowing, but we'll see if we need to do that. Yeah, and so at the moment this isn't insulated, but we'll likely have like a bigger box around here with insulation to keep it cooler so it can cool quicker. But like right now, this is set to negative two degrees Celsius and we're currently at 21. So this will probably take a couple of hours to like get down to our um, temperature that we want to run, run the reaction on. So usually we turn this on like a couple a couple hours before we start. But like these are the lines I was talking about. So this is the low line. So like right now this is too low and we need to add more fluid. And this would be like the like the maximum fill line. So because this is low, we'll add a little bit more, but definitely just keep an eye on it for the first like 20 or so minutes because it'll look really low. Then all of a sudden it'll like kind of calibrate a little bit and then it'll be overfilled. So just keep an eye on it because it'll vary quite a bit at the beginning. Okay, so in order to turn this thing off, you just come back down to where we turned it on and then reach across the back and you're gonna turn that same switch off again. And right as you turn it off, you wanna make sure you're ready to close all these valves. So pop the machine off and then immediately close this valve and come to the top and then close this big one. 
And this will usually fill up a little bit more, maybe overflow if you don't do it quick enough. And from there, um, there's probably an easier way to do it, but the way that I've done it this summer is taking this little valve off. So you have like this tiny little screw holding it on. So I unscrew this and kind of loosen this up. And then this will just slide back. So we'll slide this like clamp out of the way. And then I kind of just kink the hose with my fingers like this. And then you can just pull the hose off. And then put this into your, your bucket that we started with. And then you open this valve up. And then this should just start draining as long as it's like in a straight line. And then once this is like about full, you just clamp off this valve again. And then switch to the other bucket. And then you just do the same thing until it's drained. And towards the end, this is sometimes easier with two people, but you can kind of like tilt this bucket up just so all the fluid drains out of that pipe over there. Uh, and then once you're done draining, you close this valve back off. And then usually I just put this back on here and bring this clamp that we loosened earlier and tighten it back on. I just like to reset it so then when I come back to it to fill it up, it's ready to go. I don't have to change any of this. I know last summer that there was like this metal cap. So instead of replacing the tube, they just put this metal cap on here to store it. Um, I'm not sure it matters either way. I like to do this, so then next time you use it, it's just ready to go. And then once that tight, you double check that both these valves are closed, and then you should be good to go. Another thing I realized after I recorded the first part of this video is we had been filling, uh, pretty much this whole summer, we were filling up this as it would like drain out the antifreeze. We just filled this container to keep the level high. Another way you could probably do this is while both these valves are sealed, you could probably just fill up this bucket with the antifreeze and then turn it on. That might be an easier way to do that instead of sitting down here and filling this as it fills up. But we haven't done that before. I just kind of thought of that after I finished recording the first video. But yeah, so then this, you just slide back and it should be ready to go for the next time. And for like the settings on here, we never really changed the settings because it was set to get to negative two degrees Celsius. But because this bath isn't insulated at the moment, uh, we couldn't really achieve anything lower than that. So there is a way to change like the settings on here and then change like how quickly it ramps to a temperature and how cold it gets. But we didn't really get into that. So I'm not entirely sure how that works, but there is a way to change like your parameters. But we didn't really need to just because this wasn't able to get much colder than negative two degrees Celsius.